Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Join us now as we go to the Word of God from the man of God, Pastor Frank Ryan Jr., for today's message. Thank you, and God bless you. We're going to ask God's glory to come on up.
violations, you didn't let go. Through hard and you didn't let go. Through ups and through downs, you didn't let go. But you held on to the hand of God, and He brought you through. Hallelujah, God kept you. He's a keeper. Through pain, He's a keeper. He'll turn your pain into praise. He's a keeper. Ah, oh, God is an awesome God. A wonderful God. And He can do exceedingly above and beyond what you can even think, handle, or act. So I beg you, I beg every day to stand to your feet and just give Him 10 seconds of praise. Why? Because He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the saints.
shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman who is unmarried and a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is to say God with us. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because of the gift of your son who you've given for us this day recognizing that it is because of that gift that we are even here, that we move, we exist, and we have our being. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for what transpired. We thank you for the move of your Holy Spirit in this yes. place on this yes. morning. Yes. Yes. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you will prepare all ears, all hearts, all minds for the word that you have given and will speak through this man of God. I pray, Father, that you will once again, Heavenly Father, allow me to decrease as you increase. Speak through me now that all hearts, Heavenly Father, may be able to experience your word in a brand new and fresh way. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this word will destroy, not just break, but every yoke and bondage, Heavenly Amen. Father, that your people have come to be under. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I pray that this word would bring restoration, that it will bring clarity like never before, yes, yes, so that you may be magnified in every area of their life. More than anything, I pray that someone who may not know Jesus will come to know him yes, as their yes. Lord and Savior, and that this word, Heavenly Father, that you will plant in our heart, that we'll be able to take it out of these doors, these walls, Heavenly Father, yes. that we may minister unto someone else who may need a Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you for just a time from the subject, Promises, Provision, and Peace. Promises, Provision, and Peace. Welcome to the Seasons of Miracles. Amen. Uh, what a beautiful season that we're in. Amen. Uh, we have the miracle of the Virgin Mother. We have the miracle of the manger. Amen. And messengers. And then we have the miracle of the Magi. Amen. Each of these miracles teaches us something about God. Amen. The miracle of the Virgin Mother indicates that God can do miraculous things in the life of people who don't even expect it. Somebody who don't even think that they are significant in who they are. But God can bless you with a gift. Amen. Amen. Just like the Virgin Mary in a miraculous way. And can't nobody do anything about it. Amen. The miracle of the manger and the messenger shows us, amen, and be, amen, that there will always be room in the end for you. No matter whether you feel that you've been left out, amen, crossed out, put out, God always got a spot for you, amen. 
All you have to do is continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand and believe that he is who he say he is and he'll always make room for you. Not just you, but your gift as well. Yes, yes. That's the type of God that we serve. Amen. Yes. That will make something out of nothing. Amen. And then the miracles of the Magi coming to see, amen, the baby Mary and bringing gifts. Amen. There are some gifts that God has laid up. Amen. Just for you. He's given to other individuals just to hold just a little while. Amen. And in due season, in due time, he'll turn them over to you. You don't even know how you got them. You don't even understand what you've done to deserve them. But simply because from the beginning of time, there's something called election. That God has elected you from the beginning of time to be blessed. To receive his promises, his provision, and his peace. And in due season, he begins to open up windows of opportunity for you and for me. Amen. That will come through other people blessing you in spite of you. Amen, somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so that's, that, that's, that's a, 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 just a look at the miracles of this particular season. We can correctly conclude that these are messages of Christmas. Amen. Yeah. Today, let us consider the miracle of the Virgin Mary. It's... Uh, it is a message of promises, provision, and peace. God is, number one, the great promise maker. Amen. I love the promises of God. Church, one of the things that I know beyond the shadow of doubt is that God will provide. Amen. After creation came, the fall, and then the promise of redemption. Amen. In Genesis 3.15, uh, God promises the enemy, our enemy, and he does not make promises that he will break. He promised our enemy. He says that in due time, amen, uh, uh, his seed, amen, uh, her seed, amen, will, will crush the seed, your seed, amen. Uh, uh, and what he's talking about there is he's saying that the seed of Satan, amen, will be crushed by Eve's seed, which is Jesus Christ, amen? And so we have there the first promise of the coming Savior, amen? And so, so it was that Jesus was born, and our enemy tried to snuff him out by killing all small children. But, amen, as God promises are true, yea and amen, they came to fruition. And definitely when Jesus rose from the dead, amen, he crushed the head of the enemy, letting the enemy know and letting you know that we can overcome everything and anything, even death itself, amen. And so God promises, amen, our true. Why? Because he is the great promise maker, amen. And so the serpent head was bruised, amen. The work of the enemy would be undone, amen. And so what did the promise of redemption entail? It entails God's love, amen, that would cause him to provide a savior for sinners. Let me say that again. God's love would cause him to provide a savior for sinners. That's you or that was you, and that was me. Sometimes we get it twisted, amen, and we call ourselves sinners. Our, our sinners are those who do not know Jesus Christ. Our job, amen, is to go to a sinful world, those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and produce a gospel that can save them, which is Jesus Christ. The gospel is the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. What we are in this place is we are saints. We once were sinners, but we've been saved by grace. So now we are saints that sometimes sin, but we aren't sinners. Amen. And so we, we were sinners that need a Savior. God promised, amen, that he would send us a Savior, and he did just that. God's grace will bring salvation to those who do not deserve it. You and I didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All you have to do is look back at how you lived your life. Uh, look back at the things that you've done. 
some of the things that we did were so bad that we still got family members that still won't forgive us. Amen. Amen. But I'm so glad that they're not God. Amen. Yeah. I'm so glad that they don't yeah. think like God. Yeah. I'm so glad that I serve a Savior yeah. that's full of grace and mercy. Yeah. And He's the yeah. God of not just a second chance, yeah. but He's the God of another chance. Amen. Amen. Why? Because yeah. He promised that He'll do it. And He's not a man that He should lie. Yeah. He's the God of promises, provision, and peace. Yeah. And so I just give God all the praise, amen, yeah. that he's given me another chance to get it right. Come on and give God yeah. a hand clap of praise. Yeah. You didn't deserve it, amen, but you yeah. got it in yeah. high. Yeah. Amen. The virgin birth, amen, yeah. will announce the coming of the Redeemer, amen. And the virgin shall bear a son, amen. Unto us, amen, a child is born and a son is given. Am I right about it? God is the great, amen, not only is he's the great promise maker, but he, God is a great problem solver, yeah. amen. He's a great problem solver. I don't know about you, but I don't solve problems too well. Uh, compared to on the level of God even not even on the level I don't solve problems that well because things are always changing yeah. amen and some of us don't do well with change I remember uh, a Reverend uh, Branch and I came over and and little Terrence was in school at the time and uh, we were doing something and he brought his homework over it was math work amen can I tell you that I'm good at math? Amen. I, 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 I was an excellent student at math. I was an A student at math. And he opened his book. Amen. And I began to just work my magic. And I'm doing this and doing that and call myself solving some problems. And Reverend Branch looked at me and said, that ain't right. I said, look, a one plus one is still two. Is it not? He said, but that's not right. I said, what do you mean? He said, that's new math. I said, what do you mean? We better go one plus one is going to always be two. He said, I'm telling you, bro, that's you mad. And I thank God for his wisdom, and I thank God for the wisdom of his son, because if they listened to me, all of his problems would be wrong. Amen. But God is the ultimate problem solver. Amen. He can solve any problems that you have. He can solve any issue that you have. Amen. Your promises are, your, your, your problems are nothing compared to what God can do. God looks at your, your, your problems and he just smiles at them. Why? Because from the beginning of time, they've already been solved. He's already worked it into the equation. Even when we fall down, even when we mess up, amen, Romans 8, uh, uh, 28, uh, uh, jumps in. That all things work together. For those who love the Lord are called according to his purpose. His word, amen, that he's already put into even time have already solved whatever problems that you had. You do recall when Jesus was on the cross, he said that it was finished. What was finished? The last obstacle, amen, that you and I would ever face was finished. That was death. Anything else, he he been finished. Everything else, he already took care of. He took care of your problems with your marriages. He took care of your problems on your job. All those things, he's already taken care of. And so now the last enemy of death is finished. And so he is the great problem solver. The promise, amen, of redemption calls for a savior. Amen. The savior was to be born of a virgin. Consider the creation of Adam and Eve. All people since that time came by procreation. The virgin birth stands alone. A special miracle and a sign. And you know, that's something awesome right there in terms of the miracle, the special. God wants to do something special in your life. He wants to do something that nobody else seen before. Somebody, nobody else can even recognize and can, can't even understand. He wants to do something beyond you so that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't you. Amen. Why? Because he don't want you getting any of the glory. He don't want you uh, uh, getting any of the accolades. Why? Because he is a jealous God. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. All he wants you to do is understand his promises, his provision, and his peace. That his word is true and amen. amen. And so here he did something miraculous. The, the, the birth stands alone. The virgin birth stands alone. What God is about to do in your life will stand alone. People would step back and they would look in awe. Their jaw would drop. 
and try to figure out how is it that you're able to do this or accomplish this or, or to deal with this situation and still have the peace of God. Yes. What God is about to do in your life will stand alone. So much so that others will come forward and they're going to want to know the God that you serve. They're going to want to know the God that you worship. They're going to want to know the God of promise, the God of provision, and the God of peace. And he's expecting you to introduce somebody to that God. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Amen. Miracles are no problem to God. He specializes in them. He specializes in whatever your broke situation is. He specializes whatever your issues are. He specializes whatever your problem is. You got family problems? Just get God. You got children got problems? Just get God. You got work problems, all you got to do is just get God. Uh -huh. When you've got God, you've got miracles, you've got everything. Oh, yeah. Everything. You wanted to, I'm going to tell you something. The, the reason why so many people in time past used to love about IBM, although it cost a whole lot to even own an IBM product, we well, knew and understood that what came with the product, what came with the name, was quality and was yeah, served. Right. Yeah. They understood that when you got IBM, you got everything that you need. Yeah. You got all the help you need. When you got God, you got you get everything that comes with God. Yeah. You get creative. You get miracles. You uh -huh. get an all-knowing, all-powerful yeah. God. Yeah. You get a God that can do exceedingly above and beyond what you yeah. can even think or act. Is there anything too hot for God? And so you've got God and you're struggling and you're going through. Uh, I just use God. See, you, you've got to use what you tell your neighbor, just use what you got. He's put something in the inside, the Holy Spirit. That 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 the job is to guide you through everything, all problems, all situations. Amen. He's your GPS, he's your compass. He's everything that you need to get through this rocky situation that you're going through. <coughs> he is the promise. Amen. That God promised to you and to me. Miracles are nothing to God. God is a miracle worker, a miracle maker, yeah, yeah. a miracle deliverer. Yeah. So what we should do every day of the rest of our life is expect God uh -huh. to do something extraordinary. Yeah. Why? Because he's not an ordinary God. Yeah. He is extraordinary. Nothing that God does is ordinary. Yeah. Do you realize what it takes for us to wake up every day mm -hmm. and to move and to walk and for these bodies to work? They worked because God promised us that they would work. They worked because he's provided for us that we may feed them that they may work. Nothing that God does is ordinary. Everything is extraordinary. Everything is exceed. He's, listen, it says God will do exceedingly above. Yeah. And beyond what you can even think. So that means that whatever you think, amen, I don't care what level you think, God is so much above that. Amen. Uh -huh. yes. amen. He can do so much more than that. Yes. So whatever you want, ask God. Amen. Whatever you're dealing with, just ask God. Mm -hmm. And God will come through. Why? Because he promised me yes. and he promised you. Yes. He says, I'll never uh -huh. leave you nor forsake yes. you. Uh -huh. I'll be with you always, even yeah, until the always. end of the day. But God, I uh, messed up last week. He says, my blood covers you. I, I messed up last year, but my blood covers you. I fell short on this situation, but my blood covers you. I'm bound by my promise to provide for you and to keep you in perfect peace. Huh? Yes. If you're not in peace this morning, ask God. Amen. If you're lacking provision, just ask God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Whatever He promised, He'll do it. He promised us a Savior and He gave us a Savior. And with Him comes everything that we need. Whenever we we uh, got a couple of twins on our angel tree. 
And thank God that uh, one of the things that they wanted was bikes. And thank God that they came already put together. <laughs> but I like putting together things. And whenever you buy bikes and whenever you buy furniture and put together furniture, yeah. Ikea, yeah. everything that you need is in the box. Everything that you need is in the box. Yeah. And once you construct the bike, once you construct the Ikea furniture, if it doesn't hold, if it doesn't do what it's been designed to do, it's because you've left something out. Amen. The reason why we're going through the things that we're going through, the reason why life isn't going the way that we want, because we've left something out. Yeah. 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 Everything that you need, you've already got. He's given it to you. But we continue to leave things out. We continue to leave praise out. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. Yes, yes, we yes, continue yes. to leave to leave prayer out. Yes. We continue to leave fasting out. Yes. But but in prayer, in, 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 in praise, in fasting, is the promises of God. Yes. It's the provision of God and it's the peace of God. Yes. It's all tangled up, wrapped up in there, and it cannot be separated. Yes. He promised us, did he not? Yes. The virgin birth says God is big enough to solve all of our problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gabriel answered Mary and he says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. Luke 137. With God. Now that says something. With joins us. So then it is possible that some of us are doing some things without God. And that's where the impossibility comes to play. That's where the struggle comes. Because some of us have decided to leave God at home. Some of us have decided to leave God at church. We got this little box called church. And we, we leave God there whenever we want to do our own thing. And then we run into struggles. We run into problems. And we run into issues. But the angel told Mary that with God nothing shall be impossible. Not only is God a great promise maker, not only is he a great problem solver and provider, but God is a great peacemaker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The virgin born one was to be called Emmanuel, meaning the name is God with us. I don't know about you, but how can you not have peace when God is with you? Wow. Say so. No matter what your storm is, how can you not have peace if you've got God with you? He even promised that goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. How can our mind be in turmoil? How can we be tossed to and fro? How can we be struggling with so many different things if we've got Emmanuel uh, with us? Uh -huh. And he has promised that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so if we've got him with us, then we've got the peace of God. You see, man separated us from God. But Christ came to unite us back with him. Amen. Amen. So that we will be shalom, that we will be whole, nothing missing. Nothing at all. So that everything that you need, just like the, 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 the slogan about Ragu, it says everything that you need is in there. <laughs> Everything that you need to be successful, everything that you need, amen, to give God praise is already inside you. And I dare you, I de-devil dare you to just stand on his promises. Amen. Stand on his provision. Amen. Yes. And, and, and stand on the peace of God that passed all understanding. Amen, somebody. Amen. The virgin born Savior will redeem us. Amen. At the cross. Mm. I love that song we sing. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. 
at the cross. Everything's going to bring you back to the cross. Where our Savior died so that the promises of God will be true. That the provisions of God will always be there at hand with you. And that the peace of God will always reside inside of you. We can find it at the cross. If you've lost it, go back to the cross. The cross is waiting for you. Where is the cross? The cross is your knees. The cross is, can be your bedroom. The cross can be your living room. The cross can be your bathroom. Just get on your knees and go before God. And you'll find whatever it is that you lost yeah, yeah. at the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Peace and goodwill, amen, amen, toward all men would be the message of Christ's birth. Yes. Mm -hmm. As indicated, amen, in Luke 2.14, there was a heavenly host praising God and saying peace, amen, and goodwill toward all men. Mm -hmm. A heavenly host praising. What's our excuse? Praising about what is to come. Praising about what just happened. No matter what's to come, no matter what's happened, no matter what God has birthed in our life, we need to give God some praise. Amen. Because God doesn't do something unless he does it for a reason. Sometimes we look at our child and we see burden. Amen. But God sees purpose. It does not yet appear what our children shall be. It doesn't even yet appear what some of our, us older ones will be. Because God is not finished with us yet. Why? See, we're still somebody's child. And there's still hope for us. Even though we're grown. Amen. Amen. God is still working some things out even in our life. And, I, and every time, amen, we step into a new season. Every time that we realize a new promise, every time that yes. we receive provision, a host of angels still give God praise for yes. what he's doing yes. in our life. Yes. yes. Because they see the manifestation of what the Heavenly Father has promised. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. We have peace with God. Mm -hmm. Through faith, mm -hmm. amen, in this virgin born Savior. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore, having been justified by faith. Uh -huh. How many of you know it is faith that justifies you? Mm -hmm. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. It's an awesome thing, amen, to have peace with God, being justified by faith. It is our faith that we hold on to, that we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt. Even when we can't see, we believe. We have faith. Amen. We know that we know that we know that it's going to work out for our good. And that faith justifies us when others will not. That faith justifies us when others have turned their back on us. That faith justifies us. Personal peace comes through full surrender to him. Amen. Amen. Philippians says, And the peace of God, which surpass all understandings, will guard your hearts, amen, and minds through Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Peace on earth will come when Christ returns to reign. And somebody ought to give God some praise right there. Isaiah the ninth chapter, verses 6 and 7, tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. And so we ought to give God some praise even right there. That we've got an everlasting Father. Yes. We've got one that's not just for a certain period of time, uh -huh. but he's an everlasting Father. Yes. Why? Because he exists from everlasting to everlasting. Yes. There's no beginning on God. Yes. There's no end to God. Uh -huh. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Yes. He was there before you was born, yes. and he'll be there even after 
you die. He was there before your problem even came. And he'll be there to see you through. Why? Because he's a everlasting father. But not just that. When we're going through our issues, when we're going through our problems, when we're going through marriage problems, God is a wonderful counselor. He'll link up with you and he'll walk with you and talk with you and even tell you that you're his own. Even when you're down and out and don't know which way to go, he's a wonderful counselor. He's an awesome counselor and he's got the advice that you need. Not just any advice, but the right advice. Amen. He's a mighty God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need me a mighty God. Not a small God or a little God, but he's a mighty God. Mighty enough to fight your battle. Mighty enough to put you on his shoulders and walk you through the mess and the mire clay and the issues of life that you're going through. He's a mighty God. A wonderful counselor. An everlasting father. And prince of peace. Peace that nobody can even deal with and understand. Peace that surpasses all that in my life from time to time. When everything is going upside down and all hell is breaking loose. Every now and then I call on the Prince of Peace. One who can speak to the storm and say peace be still. And everything that's going wrong in my life just get in line and becomes right. Everything that the enemy thought he took away or that I voluntarily gave the Bible says that he'll give it back to us Prince of Peace Everlasting Father Wonderful Counselor is the God that we serve we serve a God of promises provision and peace he showed it on the cross for you and he showed it on the cross for me. From the beginning of time, God promised us that he would send a savior. Come on, stand to your feet. And he delivered on that promise. That promise was Christ. Not only was Christ the promise, but Christ was the provision that we needed. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And not only would he be the provision, but he would be the peace that will calm the storm that we would go through in our lives. Church, the doors of the church was open thousands of years ago and never closed. Why? Because it was waiting for each of us. There may be somebody here today that have not walked through those doors. They walked through it by way of mouth but not heart. For David said, your word have I hidden my heart that I may not sin against you. The shortest distance between heaven and hell is the distance between your, man, your mind and your heart. You can miss heaven by that short a distance. If you're not giving God your heart, now with We hope that this message has blessed you today. We encourage you to visit our YouTube channel, Whole Life Ministries, the number one, all one word, Whole Life Ministries and the number one, all one word, and you'll see many sermons there from Pastor Brian or any one of the ministerial staff. Listen, if you're looking for a place of worship, a place where God will meet you, amen, in the beauty of his holiness, come and join us here at Whole Life Ministries International. We are located at 9000 East Hampton Drive, Capitol Heights, Maryland, 20743. The phone number is 301 336 5015. Thank you. God bless you. And we pray that this holiday season 
will enrich your life tremendously. God bless.